Okay, so we have talked about how self-control can be like a muscle and willpower is this thing that you need to have a strong case of in order to resist temptation successfully. And we also just saw that when you are depleted, when you have engaged in some self-control or you are tired, you are out of energy to engage in new self-control. But like a muscle, the more you work on it, practice, and exercise the stronger it gets and the easier it is to rebuild your strength after it's depleted so when you have strong self-control it means that being tired doesn't make it that hard to resist new temptations because your muscles are so ready all the time to resist but how do we do that how do we exercise self-control in an effective way well like i said Working out is hard, but it slowly strengthens your muscles. This is the physical representation of the self-control stuff we are talking about. If you go to the gym, you can't just bench a huge amount of weights and expect for it to go fine. But instead, slow and steady, practice constantly working on your strength increases the strength over time by constantly testing the limits of your muscles. And similarly, then exercise and self-control improves your general self-control strength. Now, there is an important thing to note as well. If you go to the gym and you are working on your ability to lift a bunch of weights, it doesn't mean that your muscle can only then be good at lifting those weights in that gym. Now your muscles are now able to lift lots of heavy things more effectively. Lifting, you know, for example, couches when you move. Like I've said already in this course, I must be having my mindset on this idea, but it's not the case that it's specific to the thing that you were using to exercise with, but that you develop strength that allows you to engage in strong behaviors across the board. It's kind of the same thing with self-control practice. So it doesn't have to be the same type of self-control for you to get the benefits of exercise. And in fact, a lot of the research that looked at people's ability to exercise self-control and build their willpower muscles, look at their activities in exercise that are completely unrelated to the kind of self-control that they really do want to achieve. So for example, some research has shown that training programs that lead people to engage in regular exercise self-control developing strategy lead them to exercise better mental self-control. They were better able to pay attention to something that were boring and tune out something that that was more interesting, but went against their long-term goals. So here, the training program had nothing to do with the actual self-control that was being tested eventually, but that this skill or self-control was being developed nonetheless. Take a look at this. As well, regular exam studying, you might think this is totally irrelevant to so many things. But in fact, by getting students to commit to a study plan and engage in self-control, pursue a long-term goal and avoid short-term temptations. Those same students ended up smoking fewer cigarettes, eating better and having better control over their emotions. All forms of self-control, but that are totally different from the training that they were doing. Finally, money management. Training, getting people to spend less money or spend money less impulsively lead to better mental control down the line so that we can see here is that for you to practice self-control and achieve your weight loss goals or your dieting goals or your exercising goals, you don't have to practice self-control exactly in the diving domain, but you can practice self-control in general with fun, silly challenges that just get yourself in the mindset of resisting short-term temptations and committing to a goal that may not be especially pleasant. Okay, so how can you do this? 
Well, here are some things that they have done in real research that has shown the kinds of benefits that I just pointed out. So one thing you can do is to just pay attention to and adjust your posture throughout the day. This is a form of self-control where you are monitoring yourself, you have a goal in mind and you are constantly looking and improving up something that you know sometimes it's more comfortable to sludge. It's less comfortable to have a good posture, but in the long term, having good posture is better. So people who were trained to spend a week paying attention to and adjust their posture, they were able to be in more control of themselves in a dieting context with choosing between foods that were either really healthy or just really tasty. The posture training actually helped them a lot. Other research has had people use their left hand for a week. Between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. This of course only works if you are right-handed. So learning to use your left hand, that's uncomfortable. It's not fun, but you are committed to a goal. You are practicing something that's uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable in the short term, but over time can be developed to be a little more proficient. Others have used them silly things like switching listering for a full 30 seconds. So there is, you know, a chemical in Listerine that is kind of creates a burning sensation. So it can be uncomfortable to switch Listerine visually for a full 30 seconds. But if you train yourself to avoid the pain, to kind of override the pain and make sure you are doing this every single day, that's a case of self-control. And finally, you can do a strobe test that people do this. If you are not familiar, this is what a strobe test is. This is a bunch of words. But instead of reading what the words are, your goal is to read out the color that the words are printed in. So, for example, this would be blue, yellow, red, green, blue, yellow, red, yellow, etc. This is actually really hard, so I did it very slowly because I didn't want to mess up in front of my students here. But if you go really quick, it gets even harder. So let's go on the third line. Green, blue, blue, yellow, red, blue, green. It's so hard. So if you do this every day with new words and new stimuli, you can get used to overriding your automatic impulses and going with the thing that you know is the better outcome for the game. I will go ahead and put this in a PDF for you in case you want to practice it with it. So in general, what you can do is practice self-control through simple fun and unrelated challenges to boost your self-control strength. So even though what you want to do eventually is have better self-control in the dieting context. You want to be able to lose weight, eat fewer high calorie foods, etc. You can practice that self-control through these unrelated silly challenges that are fun and interesting for you to do. And to just build your self-control muscle in a way that you can then end up applying to your dieting goals. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. If you have any questions, comment below, give me a like and just follow me to don't miss one of my videos on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. To your success, your health and wealth mentor.